It seemed like a reasonable request from a man who owned all but two of the business condos in the Southgate Professional Center. Stephen Lipworth simply wanted the owner of Unit 15 to pay his $46 monthly association dues. Lipworth couldn't have known he was about to trigger a 13-year legal battle with a man named Raj Singh. Well, I didn't know who Raj Singh was until he arrived at my door one day. He said to me, my name is Mr. Singh and I have your worst nightmare. Singh sued Lipworth for pain, suffering, and inconvenience, demanding $96,000 in general damages, plus an additional $6 million in punitive damages. He was just wanting to teach me a lesson. The lesson continued, one lawsuit after another, in state civil court, family court, federal court, bankruptcy court. There's so much paperwork, the San Francisco law firm defending Lipworth has dedicated an inbox to Raj Singh. It's, it's unusual. I, I don't think I've ever seen anybody do this kind of thing. Lipworth's legal bills have run into the six figures, defending claims his lawyer calls meritless. The court might sanction him, but those sanctions are uncollectible. So he's basically immune from the normal... Um, penalties. Stephen Lipworth is not the only target. We've identified dozens of lawsuits filed in the name of Raj Singh or one of his many aliases. Singh admits in this court document that he uses too many names to list. Are you recording me? Mr. Singh, yes. Singh, a licensed civil engineer, first came to our attention in December following a fatal fire at a boarded up house he owns on Stockton Boulevard. Among Singh's lawsuit targets is Sacramento County, which he blames for the fire and for the problems at two other substandard properties he owns. He's also suing the county's Environmental Management Department for trying to make him clean up this former toxic dump site that he owns that regulators say threatens a nearby creek. Last fall, he sued the city of Sacramento over its code enforcement at this house and two other properties in the city. In that lawsuit, Singh claimed taxpayers have suffered billions in damages as a result. I will, I will, I will, I will discuss with you. Singh has declined repeated requests to talk to us on camera. Do you feel like a conversation no, now, sir? No, 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 no. But in a later telephone conversation, Singh told us that he's suing the local governments on the public's behalf, and he told us that we should be on his side. In both state and federal court, judges have recognized Singh's lawsuits for what they are. In the state court system, he's been placed on what's called the vexatious litigant list, which is supposed to eliminate frivolous filings. While inclusion on the list may have slowed him down, it clearly hasn't stopped him. And one reason Raj Singh may file so many lawsuits is that it doesn't cost him anything to do it. In cases we've reviewed, he often represents himself and pleads poverty to get his filing fees waived, which prompted us to take a closer look at his finances. We discovered tax bills for 26 properties go to Singh's post office box, most of them paid for in cash, none of them actually held in his name. And we've obtained IRS audits for multiple tax years. In 2010, for example, the IRS put Singh's modified adjusted gross income at $594,000, including $31,000 in Social Security disability benefits. But look at this federal court fee waiver form that he signed in July 2010. Singh claimed he got just $200 in disability payments for the entire year and that he owns nothing of value, nothing, including real estate. Singh told us on the phone he'll discuss his financial situation if we donate $5,000 so that he can continue fighting for the public. My dear friend, camera is not allowed. I think what bothers me even more is that the authorities, um, the district attorney or the U.S. attorney or whoever might prosecute criminally, have not taken an interest in what's happening here. Stephen Lipworth sold his 27 units at the Southgate Professional Center eight years ago. But to this day, he's still paying legal fees, over $100,000 and counting, to defend himself from the guy who owned that one. In Sacramento, George Warren, News 10. Good morning, Mr. Singh. Raj Singh's become a notorious figure in the California court system, earning the formal title of vexatious litigant. But at the May 27th appeals court hearing, it was Singh's attorney, Keith Oliver, who took a shellacking for coming to court completely unprepared. 
I can't recall the arguments at this point because it's been a year, over a year, and I haven't looked at the case at all since then. Mr. Oliver, I find that rather astounding, sir. Absolutely astounding. In a 21-page opinion, the three-justice panel tossed out Singh's appeal, calling it totally and completely without merit. And they ordered Singh and his attorney together to pay $7,500 in legal fees to their target, Stephen Lipworth, whose lawyer's been fighting Singh's lawsuit abuse for 13 years. I think I'm, I'm very satisfied that the court um, agreed with our arguments and that they came down on Singh and his lawyer. And then the justices went a step further, ordering Singh and Oliver to pay another $7,500 to the court. The message is don't waste our time because it's going to cost you. Legal analyst Bill Portanova, not involved in this case, says the opinion should serve as a warning to other people like Raj Singh and Raj Singh's attorney. If there's anything you can take away from this case, it is that no lawyer and no plaintiff is immune from being found out by the judges because when they do find out that you've wasted their time, they're going to take it out of your hide. We broke the news of the ruling to Singh in person at his Midtown Sacramento apartment. He did not seem surprised. In Sacramento, George Warren, News 10. We've identified roughly two dozen properties owned by Raj Singh and held in the name of his wife or various trusts. And we've seen a pattern emerge of Singh buying substandard properties and then fighting with regulators who insist the properties be brought up to code. The most tragic case is the December fire at a boarded up house on Stockton Boulevard that killed 35-year-old Rosalea Trejo. Perhaps the most puzzling case is the former South Sacramento landfill Singh bought in 2001. A neighbor down the street's been asking the question for 13 years. When the hell would anybody buy a place at a dump? After Singh discovered that he couldn't build on the property because of underground contamination, he racked up a quarter of a million dollars in penalties for ignoring the county's orders to clean it up. This week, the Cal EPA division known as Cal Recycle began a month-long project to cap the former dump site with 15 inches of clean fill dirt. The $260,000 spent will become another lien on Singh's property, along with two adjacent parcels under separate ownership. In the end, the, the important thing is to make sure that that site is cleaned up and does not pose a hazard. Now, here comes the ironic twist. Shortly after he bought the former dump site, Singh sued the former owners, claiming they took advantage of his immigrants' lack of knowledge of California law. But by then, he'd already been labeled a vexatious litigant by the California court system, the very definition of a person who knows their way around the courthouse. Both a superior court and appeals court ruled the mess that used to be known as Waring's Dump belongs without question to Raj Singh. In Sacramento, George Warren, News 10. I can talk you conversations, but not with us on the camera. We've noticed a pattern in Raj Singh's real estate investments. He picks up substandard properties, generally all cash purchases, then fights city and county efforts to bring them up to code. It's just he puts people's lives in danger, and we had to do something. His house wasn't getting fixed. But we were puzzled by Singh's 2013 purchase of the rundown Roadrunner Motel on an isolated stretch of Highway 95, about two hours southeast of Reno. What could he possibly want here? What happened Tuesday appears to have answered that question. The Mineral County Sheriff's Department, Tribal Police, and the Nevada Highway Patrol raided the Roadrunner Motel and seized a half million dollars worth of marijuana plants, processed marijuana, and hash oil. The sheriff is certain that Raj Singh knew all about it. Mr. Singh and I had quite a lengthy conversation yesterday evening. Uh, his statements to me are indicative of someone who knew uh, about uh, marijuana being grown on the property. Sheriff Stuart Hanty says cultivation of marijuana in Mineral County is a crime. And the fact that it happened 361 feet from an elementary school, the sheriff says, adds a felony enhancement. Uh, I take this personally because of its location to the school, and uh, I will guarantee you that if Mr. Singh decides to go on the run, that the Mineral County Sheriff's Department 
will be the prime agency to take him into custody, wherever that may be, and uh, I will gladly be available to help in that extradition process if he, if he chooses to go that route. Good morning, Mr. Singh. Raj Singh has insisted in the past that we contact him only via email, which we did, and he has not responded. In Sacramento, George Warren, News 10. The fall harvest came early at a 10-acre property outside Placerville, thanks to a state and local drug task force. There were roughly 100 plants pulled from the ground. A man who says he lives here was clearly unhappy. This is private property off my property. Okay. Technically, it's not his property at all. He may live here as a tenant, but the landlord is Raj Singh. The property is held in the name of his wife. At about the same time, the drug task force raided another Foothills property owned by Singh, again held in his wife's name. This one, 42 acres. News 10 has independently identified pot growing operations on multiple Singh properties in El Dorado County. A neighboring property owner at one location provided these pictures. He said showed how the pot growers broke into his well house to steal water. So it goes like this. And Singh bought this 10 acre parcel two years ago, apparently unaware that it's landlocked without water or power. A neighbor who did not want to be identified described a bizarre encounter she had with Singh. When he walked up, he was very friendly and identified himself and said who he was and then said that I would <laughs> sell him power and I would give him water from my well. And I said, no, actually I won't. <laughs> <laughs> when we first questioned Singh about the pot growing activities late last year, he claimed they were legal because it's medical marijuana. The sheriff of Mineral County, Nevada, said Singh told him the same thing on the phone following a raid this week on the remote motel he bought last year. The difference, the sheriff says, is that cultivation of marijuana in his county is illegal under any circumstances, and he expects Raj Singh to go to jail for it. In Sacramento, George Warren. News 10. We've seen you walk. Come on, we know you can walk. Sacramento County Sheriff's deputies took Raj Singh into custody outside his Midtown Sacramento fourplex just before 1 p.m. Anything to say, Mr. Singh? What? Anything to say? I have it already, that's all I can say. Up until now, most of Singh's conflicts with authorities have involved the rundown properties he owns. Sacramento County tried to force him to fix up this boarded up house before something like this happened. A woman initially identified as a squatter died in a fire there last December. Singh later admitted that she lived there with his consent. But then criminal investigations began exploring Singh's other activities on his non-urban properties. On Friday, drug agents seized 100 marijuana plants on 10 acres Singh owns outside Placerville. Do you know Raj Singh? Off my property. What led to the handcuffs today, however, was an out-of-state investigation that seemingly came out of nowhere. Authorities in Mineral County, Nevada last week raided a motel Singh owns a couple of hours southeast of Reno, taking a half million dollars worth of marijuana plants and processed marijuana. The sheriff there obtained an arrest warrant Friday and today praised his law enforcement colleagues in Sacramento for doing the rest. Teamwork. Teamwork got it done. He's in custody and now he has to face uh, consequences through the legal system. I have attorney and, and, and this is all illegal, but what should I say? It will be interesting to see if Singh's able to post $50,000 bail. Although we've identified 28 properties he owns, most of them paid for with cash, in recent court documents, Singh claims he's flat broke. In Sacramento, George Warren, News 10. Nobody really knew why a Sacramento real estate investor bought the rundown Roadrunner Motel last year, more than 200 miles away on the Walker River Paiute Indian Reservation. Tribal Vice Chairman Amber Torres was hopeful the buyer would restore the community's only motel, which has obviously seen better days. Yeah, initially, and maybe come in and fix the place up so that it's um, inviting and welcoming to people. Then came the raid on the motel in early September, where authorities seized 144 pounds of marijuana. Mineral County Sheriff Stuart Hanty said he spent nearly an hour on the phone talking to motel owner Raj Singh. It was evidently clear to me that he knew what was going on at the, at the motel, 
that he knew that there was marijuana being grown there. The sheriff says Singh told him it was medicinal marijuana, even though that's illegal in Mineral County. And the motel is right across the highway from an elementary school. But within a couple of weeks, Singh's story had changed. In one court document, he said that because he lived so far away, he placed the motel under the management of Indians. And in his words, they grew marijuana for the benefit of Indians. To hear that is so shocking. We had absolutely no part in that. Singh faces charges of marijuana cultivation and trafficking and appeared in Hawthorne Township Justice Court for the first time this afternoon. The judge allowed him to remain free on the bail he posted in Sacramento in September. But minutes later, the sheriff arrested Singh outside the court building on a misdemeanor charge of stalking because he repeatedly sent emails to the sheriff after being warned to stop. Singh's Nevada attorney was outraged. Uh, you just saw a sheriff who lost an election last night exercising his power, I guess. Has nothing to do with the election. As long as I'm sitting sheriff of this county, I'm not going to stand for it. He was adequately warned. I told him, and he refused to comply. Ergo, the arrest. By the time you see this, Raj Singh will have been released from jail on the stalking charge. But the sheriff says he made his point. In Mineral County, Nevada, George Warren, News 10.